Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with the board Better Reading Every Day. Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with board Better Off Reading Every Day. Today's book is going to be good. It is a classic. It is The Little Mermaid. So, get yourself nice and comfy in your seat because this is going to be kind of a long one. Longer than my usual one. This book has a lot of pages. So you got your something to drink and you're ready to go? I'm ready. Daydreams. Under the sea, Merf Merfo hurled towards King Titan's palace. Everyone wanted a good seat for the concert. The merfolk watched as Sebastian, the court composer, signaled for the music to begin. Six of King Titan's daughters sang and swirled around the stage to the sound of underwater orchestra. Tonight, King Triton's youngest daughter, Ariel, would sing her first solo. But when the giant clamshell opened, Ariel was nowhere to be seen. Ariel, bellowed King Triton. Nearby, Ariel had forgotten all about the concert. She and her friends, Flounder, were swimming around a sunken ship. Ariel looked, Ariel loved looking for things from the human world above. It's wonderful, she cried, finding a shiny fork. Kind of like mine right here. See it? I'm surprised it stayed. <clears throat> Did you hear something? Asked Flounder. You're not getting cold fins, are you? Teased Ariel. Then Flounder spotted a large dark shape swimming right, a large dark shape swimming right towards them. Shark, he yelled. The two friends swam as fast as they could, but the shark could swim faster. So Ariel whisked Flounder through a small hole in an anchor. The hungry shark followed them and got stuck. Take that, you big bully, Flounder jeered. Ariel brought her new treasure to Scuttle, the seagull. This is a dingle hopper, explained Scuttle, combing his hair with the fork. Humans are you humans use these to straighten their hair. Deep below the sea, Witch Ursula was gazing into a magic bubble, spying on Ariel. Suddenly, Ariel remembered the concert. She hurried home to find King Triton waiting for her. He was angry about the, about the ruined concert, but even angrier when he learned of Ariel's trip to the surface. Never go to the surface again, he ordered. Later, the king told Sebastian Ariel needed supervision, and you are just the crab to do it. Meanwhile, Ariel was daydreaming in her secret grotto. I don't see how the world that makes such wonderful things could be bad, she said. The prince, Ariel looked up and saw the shadow of a ship overhead. She swam to the surface to get a closer look. There she saw a handsome young man. 
The other humans called him Prince Eric. Hurricane a coming, a sailor shouted. Howling wind tore at the ship's sails. Giant waves tossed it onto the jagged rocks. Prince Eric was thrown into the ocean. Ariel frantically searched for this prince. Finding him, she needed all her strength to rescue. Safe on the shore, Ariel sang to the unconscious prince. At last, he began to awaken. Someday I'll be part of your world, she said, slipping into the sea. Minutes later, the prince's servant, Sir Grimsby, discovered him. A girl rescued me, said the prince, groggily, and she had the most beautiful voice. When King Triton found out that Ariel had been up to the surface again, he flew into a rage. Humans are all the same, King Triton shouted. Savage fish eaters, incapable of any feeling. With a few strokes of his trident, he destroyed all of Ariel's treasures and swam off. Two sinister eels e interrupted Ariel sobbing. We were, we were sent by someone, they hissed, who can make all your dreams come true. The eels brought Ariel, brought Ariel to Ursula. The sea witch was willing to help Ariel in exchange for her voice. But Ursula added, the prince must fall in love with you by sunset on the third day. If not, Ariel would change back into a mermaid and begin Ursula's slave forever. The ocean churned as Ariel's voice was captured into a magical shell and her tail turned into legs. Prince Eric and his dog Max found Ariel on the beach. You seem very familiar to me, said Eric. Have we met? Ariel could only nod. Don't worry, I'll help you, he smiled. Although she looked like the girl who rescued him, Eric didn't think it could be her. She couldn't speak, much less sing. That evening, Ariel appeared for dinner in a pretty gown. The princess, the princess surprised, Ariel picked up her fork and began combing her hair, just as Scuzzle had thought her. Dingle Hopper. Remember? Dingle Hopper was combed through the hair. That's what Scuttle told her, that you use the Dingle Hopper to comb through your hair. Yeah, that's what it's for. Under the sea, a worried King Triton had not been able to find Ariel. Leave no shell unturned until she's safe at home, he told his servants. Meanwhile, Ariel and Eric were happily rowing on the lagoon. Just as they were about to kiss, Ursula's eeld overturned the boat. Ursula's plan. Ursula hatched a plan to keep Eric from falling into from falling in love with Ariel. She turned herself into a pretty girl named Vanessa and she wore the shell containing Ariel's voice. That evening, the prince heard someone singing. It was the voice of the girl who had saved him. Eric looked out on looked out to see Vanessa. He fell under her wicked spell. When Ariel awoke the next morning, she saw Eric with Vanessa. 
The wedding ship departed at sunset, the prince told Grimby. Now Ariel had lost her chance at true love and was doomed to be Ursula's slave forever. Aboard the wedding ship, Vanessa crackled. Triton's daughter will be mine. Looking through the porthole, Scuttle saw the mirror reveal that Vanessa was really Ursula. He quickly found Ariel. The prince is marrying the sea witch in disguise, he exclaimed. Find a way to stall that wedding, Sebastian yelled to Scuttle as they took off to rescue Eric. Flounder helped Ariel along, but the sun was starting to set. There wasn't much time left. Scuttle and his friends did their best to interrupt the wedding. Why, you little, Vanessa yelled, trying to defend herself. In all the commotion, the magic shell shattered to the ground just as Ariel reached the ship. Eric, spoke Ariel. You can talk, said the prince. You're the one. It was you all the time. Happy at last, the prince leaned over to kiss Ariel, but seconds before their lips met, the sun set. You're too late, shouted Ursula, turning her, turning her beastly self. Ariel found her legs changed back into a mermaid's tail. It's not you I'm after, Ursula told Ariel, whisking her into the sea. I've got much bigger fish to fry. At those words, King Triton appeared. Ursula told him about the deal she had made with Ariel in return for his daughter's freedom. The king agreed to take Ariel's place as a slave. Daddy love. At last, this is mine. Ursula laughed, placing Triton's crown on her head. Using her new powers, Ursula grew to a Mount monstrous size. Now I am the ruler of the ocean. But the brave prince steered a ship over the raging waves right towards Ursula. The bow of the ship pierced her cold heart. Slowly, Ursula's horrendous body sank beneath the weave, the waves. All at once, the ocean was calm and King Triton's power were restored. Now he realized how much Eric and Ariel loved each other. He changed Ariel's tail back into legs. I love you, Daddy, said Ariel, hugging him. He knew he would miss her terribly. All the merfolk and sea creatures gathered to watch the happy couple's wedding. Everyone cheered as Eric kissed his new princess. Then they sailed away to live happily ever after. Boys and girls, I chose this book because of course, I know quite a few young ladies that absolutely love The Little Mermaid. They request it when they come to after school. They request it at every turn. It's what they want to watch and what they want to see. I did not realize that there was a shortened version in the book like this until recently when I got this book. And I couldn't wait to bring it to you because it's one of my daughter's favorite books, The Little Mermaid. And it also has a crab in there, Sebastian. Um, which we also love because he has what we call a Jamaican accent. It's probably some kind of a West Indian accent when he goes, Oh, what a soft shell crab I be. 
and when um, <laughs> whenever he tries to keep her out of trouble he his accent is just so funny and that's one of the reasons why we actually love um, the Little Mermaid aside from the fact that the, it's you know it's a beautiful love story so I wanted to bring it to you and I also love this story because her dad loved her so much that he gave her what she really really wanted which was to have legs so that she could be with the prince and if that isn't true love I don't know what thumbs up for daddies who love their daughters and they'll give them anything anything that is gonna make them happy and set them free yes <laughs> so that's why I chose this book and also I wanted you to see what I have here I have my dingle hopper of course and I have my little mermaid now I have something to show you I hope you're prepared this little mermaid actually was sleeping beauty about an hour ago when I read the other book so here's how it's gonna go we have her now right we are going to slowly turn her upside down pull the dress down to reveal Sleeping Beauty. Did you catch that or did you miss it? I'm going to show you again. Dingle Hopper. Sleeping Beauty. But that's not what the story is about. The story is about the Little Mermaid. So let's go.